Hello, in this episode we are taking you to the capital of Tasmania, Hobart. Lyle and I visited Hobart separately and now together and we just love this city. It's one of those cities that the more you go, the more you discover and the more you love it. It's such a clash of history, modern art, nature, sporting events, food, wine and so much more. We start our episode with the crazy fire alarm problem at the airport before heading to the spectacular little known village of Opossum Bay. Well, I guess the secret will be out after this podcast though. We then head to Hobart where we cross the famous Derwent River to the city's historic waterfront area. There we share all about the most visited tourism attraction in Tasmania, the Salamanca Markets. This is also where the world famous Sydney to Hobart yacht race finishes. You can't visit Hobart without a trip to the top of Mount Wellington. We try and describe just how incredible the views are at the pinnacle and it's at 1,271 metres. Obviously, we will tell you about some of the wineries within 30 minutes of Hobart and the oldest operating brewery in Australia, the Cascade Brewery. Hobart has one of the most beautiful and diverse botanic gardens anywhere in Australia and I tell you the best things to see when you visit. Of course, we share where to eat, where to stay, and lots of fun and interesting facts about Tasmania, like it actually has, Tasmania, the cleanest air in the world. How about that? Stick around to the end, though, if you're not easily shocked, that is, to hear about the famous, fabulous, weird, wacky, fascinating Mona, a privately owned art museum by an eccentric millionaire that has one of its most popular exhibitions, a poo-making machine, and, get this, a wall of over 150 different plaster casts of, let me say, just it's a certain woman's body part. Yep. So enjoy this interesting and diverse city in this podcast all about Hobart. Cheers. And welcome to the Beach Travel Wine Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Leanne. And I'm Lyle. And this is the travel podcast for beach loving, wine drinking couples over 50. So if that sounds like you, grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax and listen as we go travelling the world one wine at a time. Cheers. Hola, Mimo. Hola, Leonita. So this week, Lyle, we are heading down south in Australia. Correct. To the magical state of Tasmania. Yes. Uh, It's a beautiful, beautiful place and uh, we just love it and everyone who goes there just loves it. But it's one of those places that, especially overseas listeners, probably have not even heard of and Mm. a lot of Australian people haven't even been there. Yeah. It's also one, it's because it's separate from the mainland Australia, it's sometimes even left off maps. Correct, yeah. Yeah. And But we, we just love it and we just can't wait to tell you all about it. But this week we're going to... Uh, start in the capital and tell you a bit about Tasmania in general and then in in um, upcoming episodes we're going to take you on a lap of Tasmania as we we did it so that'll be a lot of fun and, and a lot of the places we went and saw but it's unique isn't it yeah look I'm really excited about Tassie yeah so sort tell of. it tell us tell us about it Don. and uh, yeah so the locals call it Tassie like with all Australian mm. uh, we cut everything in half. So, uh, yeah, so, so it's yeah. not Tasmania, it's Tassie. Yeah. Look, the population's just under 572,000. That's for the entire state. So it's it's not a huge population. Uh, Tasmania is an island state of Australia. It mm. is located 240k to the south of Australia's mainland, separated from it by the Bass Strait. Correct, yeah. Uh, the south of Tasmania Island lie, lies... Two and a half, two and a half thousand kilometers from George the Fifth coast of Antarctica. Yes. Yeah, so now there's only other one other country that's actually closer, and that's New Zealand. Yeah. Tasmania has the cleanest air in the world. Just like the cleanest air in the world. That's that's spectacular, and we we felt that you could taste it even if that's sure, the word. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, so, I sorry. think I think that our um, we'll tell you about that. that yeah. Our New Zealand cousins may disagree with that. But, um, yeah, look, it's monitored by the Cape Grim Baseline Air Pollution Station. The lack of pollution is due to the position of Tasmania in the Southern Ocean. The island of Tasmania f- 
fit 119 times inside the mainland. So is that because the mainland's so big or is that because Tamay is so small? Well, and I have to admit, I went and double-checked that fear because I thought, no, that can't be right. Yeah, in fact, you said when I said it, bullshit, Ma, that can't be right. <laughs> and I said, hang on, you might be right. Yeah, so and so I went from... 119 to, oh, was it 19? No, no, it is. It's definitely 119. Sure. Um, the history of Tassie. Yes. Uh, Tasmania right. was first discovered on November 24, 1642, by Abel Tasman. He named it Van Diemen's Land or Anthony's Van Diemen's Land after the sponsor of the exploration, Anthony Van Diemen, who was also Governor General of the Dutch East Indies currently known as Indonesia. Hmm. It was officially renamed Tasmania on the 1st of January, 1856. Tasmanian's main island was inhabited by, Aborig by Aboriginal peoples for up to 40,000 years before British colonisation. Hmm. It is thought that the Aboriginal Tasmanians became separated from the mainland Aboriginal groups about 11,700 years ago after rising sea levels formed Bass Strait. Yeah, okay, that's pretty pretty fascinating. Well, you so, know, that's climate change again. Yeah, okay. Under the British rule, yes. the island was initially part of the colony of New South Wales but became a separate colony under Van Diemen's Land in 1825. Mm. Approx approximately 80,000 conflicts were sent to Van Diemen's Land before the practice known as transportation ceased in 1853. And we're going to tell you a lot about convicts, not in this episode, but in, in an upcoming um, episode because there's one area in Tasmania that's um, particularly known for uh, a convict settlement, yeah? Yes. yes so. Now, things unique to Tassie. Things unique to Tassie, hey? At least one-fifth of Tasmania is a World Heritage Area. The area, which covers 1.58 million hectares, includes national parks, marine and forest reserves. Mm. About 42% of its land area, including national parks and world heritage, that's the one-fifth, mm. 21%, is protected in some form of reserve. So Nearly almost half. half of the entire state is protected under some sort of regulation. Well, and it's you can see why because it's oh yeah, like stunningly beautiful. Yes. Tasmania has yes. the oldest trees in the world. Huon pine trees are located in western Tasmania. Some of the oldest living things on earth. Mm. Wow. Yeah. The Huon pine grows very slowly. Mm -hmm. A twenty meter tree could be a thousand years old. Another thing. Yeah, Huon pine wood wood is very popular. You know, um, with uh, like beautiful uh, wooden gifts and things like that, yeah, that people have. Yeah, like too. furniture and stuff. Um, yeah, but also, yeah, like uh, wooden bowls and that sort of stuff as well, yeah. Yeah. Tasmania has dense rainforests with a lot of thick vegetation. It does. Some of the species include eucalyptus. Yes. Eucalyptus. Which are the tallest trees in mm. the world. And we saw a lot of um, areas that like full of trees, from, for, as you said, from rainforest to mountainous trees and you know we, we talk about some of those the waterfalls and things we saw sure well. sure yeah. Well, the, yeah pretty much the like it's almost like the half of like the west coast mm. is just totally protected yeah beautiful, um, beautiful. yeah uh, the first well, this is interesting too the first environmental so. political party in the world was formed <laughs> in tasmania sure okay so yeah. Um, look, I'm not really environmental. You're not really a tree hugger, but you're a tree hugger in Tassie. I am. Yeah, yeah I, I just couldn't sure. believe how beautiful it was. I get it. So I, get I, it. Uh, I, I that's my my go on that. Yeah. Um, Can I talk about Hobart now? Yes, yes, you may. Yeah. So really, it's a small area, which half of it's protected because it's stunningly beautiful, and it's not uh, doesn't have a very big population. No. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. But we're starting in Hobart. Okay, Hobart's population is about two or just over two hundred and sixty-five thousand. So it's not it's it's not big, no, it's but it also means that you know probably forty percent of um, Tasmania's population live in Hobart area. Mm. Uh, Hobart was founded in eighteen oh four as a British penal colony. Hobart is Australia's yes second oldest capital city after Sydney. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. You can tell that in the buildings, which we'll talk about in a little while as well. 
Yeah. Whaling quickly emerged as a major industry in the area and for mm -hmm. a time Hobart served as the Southern Ocean's main whaling port. Today Hobart is the financial and administrative hub of Tasmania, yeah. serving as a home port for both Australian and French Antarctic operations. Yeah, it is. So, And, and it's got a big... Um... Uh, fleet out of the CSIRO, uh, you know. Oh, have it? Yeah, yeah. Um, a friend of mine's ex-husband <laughs> uh, worked for CSIRO and he went down there to work on these ships going out into the ocean. So so how do we get to Hobart? Oh, it's funny you should ask that. Um, look, there's probably three ways. There's the Spirit of Tasmania, which is a, a, like a ferry which leaves from uh, Victoria, which yes. is its closest state, um, yes. the closest state. Now that leaves out of Geelong. And you can and, drive on it and take your own vehicle. And across. you can take, yeah, yeah. Now the the pricing that I got was uh, ninety nine dollars per head each way, mm. and uh, for a and sedan, it's extra, yeah, it's extra for big vehicles. Yeah, it's ninety nine yeah. bucks as well each yeah. way. So but you, there's um because it takes hours to get there, like you know, quite. I think it's yeah, it's two hundred and forty k. So and I think you get you can get like a sleeper berth. So I think you can actually pay. You know, that might be to to get your basic trip over but then yeah. you can you know sit up all night and sleep or you can get a sleeper berth you know um but yeah there's a quite a few different um ways that sure on the, on the boat or, or you can fly yes. or uh you can sail yeah and we um we flew into hobart the airport in hobart is like a, a regional airport really it's yeah. um you, you yeah you hop off the plane and you walk across the tarmac and um actually it was funny when we got there uh it the fire alarm was going off and it was we were standing it so it's quite hot and we're under shade but you know we couldn't go anywhere because this fire alarms just it just wouldn't stop would it and I think I, look honestly it went on it doesn't sound long but for about 15 20 minutes and, yeah, and sure. nobody really could could tell us what was going on or where we should go or any of that sort of no, stuff. No, but it was but it was funny because they the, the the people there the officials were basically saying, look, it's more than likely a false, a alarm. false alarm, but we still can't do anything, which is fair enough too. Yeah, yeah. Um, look, the best time to to go to um, Tasmania or, yes. or Hobart is between December and February. Yes, that's what uh, I've been told too. Yeah, we went experience. in February. Yep. Yeah. Great. And um, as we said, one of the ways to get there is uh, by sailing. Mm -hmm. And th yes. th it's most famous for Hobart, is most famous for the Sydney to Hobart well, yacht I don't race. Know it's most famous for, but well, it's very famous. It's for very the, famous. Yeah, but it, and Sydney. that, that uh, all started Boxing in, Day. in yeah, Boxing Day. And that all started mm -hmm. in 1945. A planned cruise to Hobart quickly turned into a race. And the famous Sydney Hobart yacht race was born wow after we got picked up by our friends after the fire emergency at the hobart airport we uh went to their beautiful home which is in opossum bay now if you leave the hobart airport and turn right you you head into the hobart city across the derwent river the tasman bridge or you hang a left and I think it's about another 20 to 30 minute drive from from the airport to the beautiful little spot of Opossum Bay. So it's basically like a big sort of horseshoe shape from Hobart all the way around to Opossum Bay, which sits right on a little peninsula, doesn't it? Yep. And we're very lucky that we um, had friends that lived there and we were able to stay with them in their beautiful home right on the Derwent river and it was spectacular and you'll see some photos of opossum bay uh in the show notes that go with this episode uh, episode 44 oh i love that number 44 that's pretty exciting go to the website um beachtroublewine.com to have a look but opossum bay is uh has rocky beaches and beautiful sandy beaches and crystal clear water of the the derwent and you can actually see Tasmania, uh, Hobart and Mount Wellington in the in the distance as well. So it's really lovely views on, on a clear day. But it's only tiny, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a population of 329. No, 327. That's right, because John and Gay moved uh, <laughs> yeah. to Hobart. And, Look, the, and the people who bought their house don't live there. They, they, they use it as a weekender. So. Oh, really? Yeah. And there's but, also a famous um, Australian cricketer that lives there or did had a house there. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's correct. He was the yeah. ex-captain. Hmm. But anyway. um, I found Opossum Bay 
absolutely stunning. And John and Gay's place, they had full walled ceiling mm, um, um, uh, windows. Yeah. And it was just glorious. There's not a lot of accommodation there, but there are some lovely little Airbnbs right on the water that you, yeah. you could stay in. Yeah, but yeah. It's, a, it's sort of really quite... Um, What's the word? It's cute. I, I don't know what, how you describe Quaint, it. Quaint, it's beautiful. Quaint, but it's beautiful. But one of the days, which was um, Valentine's Day, we were there. Yes. Anyway, I walked out and walked down the rocks and here's this young bloke and he's cleaning a crayfish. Yeah. And I, and I sort of said. Which we call lobsters, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I asked him, I said, what are you doing? He said, well, it's Valentine's Day. He said, I just went and grabbed a, a cray. Um, I said, what, by hand? He said, yeah. He said, I just grabbed it. And he said, I bought it around here because the views are better and I'm just cleaning it and it's Valentine's Day from a girl. Yeah. And I just thought that was incredible. So, yeah, look, it's just a And it wasn't glory. the first time I came across the crayfish, but we'll talk about that later yeah, as no, well. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was glorious. Um, and then uh, that one of the trips we did was to Richmond, remember? Sure. We went to... Uh, we went out for dinner with some of um, John yeah. and Gay's friends. And so Richmond, you go back into to Hobart and it's about 20 minutes drive the, um, you know, the, the other direction. And it's a cute little town as well, isn't it? You know? Oh, look, it's glorious. It's a town uh, in Tasmania, about 25 kilometres northeast of Hobart. Yeah. Richmond's most famous landmark is the Richmond Bridge, built in 1823 to 1825 around the time of the town's first settlement. It is Australia's oldest bridge still in use. Yeah, so you can still drive over it, people Sure. Do. Yeah. Okay. And the other the other thing that they're, you know, they're really famous for is St John's Catholic Church was mm. built in 1836 and is considered the oldest Roman Catholic church in Australia. Look, it was beautiful and that's and Richmond's basically uh, located in the Coal River Valley uh, wine region mm. and uh, we had a beautiful wine there um, for dinner and it was uh, Pooley's wines yeah um, that yeah it's nice and it was and it was just beautiful and um, apparently you can see um, often uh, echidnas uh, running around under that little bridge but uh, we didn't see echidnas but we've got some nice pickies there it's a beautiful area and the thing about Tasmania it's green and lush as well yeah yeah really yeah, beautiful. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, so we, we loved our time at Opossum Bay and our, our visit to Richmond, but this podcast is about Hobart. And so we want to tell you a bit more about the actual capital um, of, of Hobart, don't we? We and do. One of the, um, you want to talk about the, the bridge and the river? Did you want to do that first? Or will I talk about the, the Derwent River and the, the Tasman Bridge? Or do you want me to talk about, the, would you like me to tell everyone about the Salamanca markets first? Oh, I think you can go first. Okay, that would be great. So one of the um, Tasmania's most visited tourism attraction, or they say the, the, the most, is the Salamanca markets. Now, most people who have been to Hobart always mention the Salamanca markets. And it actually was named after the city in Spain. There was a, a fight between the British and the French and Something to do, I know, right? Something to do about Salamanca. So there you go. Great news there. Haven't we got a podcast on Salamanca, <laughs> do, Spain? Yes. <laughs> I could tell you what episode, but I don't know off the top of my head. But anyway, so the Salamanca markets uh, were established in 1972 and they are on every Saturday rail. No, I did it again. Rain, hail or shine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and unless there's actually like a gale around. So Gale force winds. Um, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, can't get all those words out. And it goes from one end of the pier, <clears throat> the wharf, right up to the other end. So it's all across the um, Salamanca Place on the historic waterfront there. And there's always 300 plus storeholders uh, there. And it'll take you, if you wanted to wander around and enjoy all the stuff, it'll probably take you about three hours. And it's it's pretty cool because there's all those old Georgian buildings that used to be like, as you talked about, warehouses for the whale oil and the grain and timber imported goods. And now um, there's they've basically converted them into cafes and bars and, and um, you know, like um, craft artisan sort of shops. And so there's the markets and then there's those. And then in behind that there's Salamanca Place, which is like a... a yeah, a lovely area, another area with restaurants and things and a fountain, you know, uh, and some statues in there, which is which is really nice. But the thing about the stalls are uh, they there's a lot of handmade stuff, a lot of very clever people in, in the Tasmania area, especially the Hobart area, that, that have, you know, some fabulous stalls. 
they have the most amazing fresh fruit there you know the and when we were there they had um punnets of blackberries um uh, oh, right. yeah and cherries that were they were absolutely divine and every second stall seemed to be gin or whiskey as well yeah and... <laughs> i was gonna say yeah that was what i remember mate, mostly is that i couldn't believe like out of 300 and uh, yeah. odd stalls i reckon 250 were either gin or whiskey yeah gin's pretty um pretty big down there but it's it's yeah you can see why it's very popular that's for sure can't you yeah look i think one of the the really special things for me that really stands out about uh hobart is everything so close yeah, oh, well, that's, that's right. You can walk everywhere, right? You can walk everywhere. Where we stayed, which was the, uh, what was it? The, the Had Hadley's Orient Hotel. Yes. Like it was just five minutes walk down to the Constitution Dock. Yes. And um, now Constitution Dock, you know, you keep on following that around and that's where you end up at Salamanca Place, mm. which is, you know, like, so it's all so close. And then... The, obviously, with Constitution Dock, you've got the Derwent River. Yes. And um, on that, you've got, you know, beautiful seafood restaurants. You've got accommodation. You've got, like, it's really, the water views yes. are spectacular. And um, we really enjoyed that area. Yeah, the waterfront's uh, lovely walking around there. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, One thing, though, about the um, the, Der the Derwent River is the Tasman Bridge, right? Sure. Yeah, they, they had a bit of a disaster back in 1975, a uh, bulk carrier the bulk carrier illawarra actually ran into the bridge and uh there were cars that went went off there were actually five people died in that and they were actually really luckier that more didn't there were a couple of um yeah cars sort of you know tilting on the edge there and um yeah. oh that's my one of my worst nightmare i actually remember that yeah. i we were I, I lived in victoria uh at that stage and i can remember the day that happened it was a it was a really big deal the Derwent River, it um, begins somewhere up in the one of the national parks, doesn't it? It does. It rises in the state's central highlands at Lake Sinclair mm. and descends more than 700 metres over a distance of more than 200 kilometres, flowing through the Hobart yep. yeah. before emptying into Storm Bay and flowing into the Tasman Sea. Now, the Tasman Sea is the sea between Tasmania and New Zealand. Mm. Now, the, the two dominant things about what I see as in, in, uh, landscape is the Derwent River and also you've got Mount Wellington. Now, where, Mount Wellington is directly sort of behind the township of Hobart. It's the most dominating feature. You know, you can't Oh, absolutely. It. It's so high too because, you, you know, obviously at Hobart you're at sea level and yep. then you've got Mount Wellington, which yeah. is how high is that? You're not going to believe this, but I know that. It's 1,270 metres high. Right. And it's often got, even in summer, got snow on the top of it, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look. And any trip to Hobart is not complete unless you've taken a, a trip up the top. You can drive up. Um, yep. You can hike up if you're mad enough. Yeah, one and a half to two hours, I oh, say. I reckon that's bullshit. Okay, fair take, enough. Take, take uh, me three or four. <laughs> look, Mount Wellington offers spectacular views of Hobart. It does, and I've got Broom. some great ones. Sorry, Don, but I just I've got some really nice photos of us on top of that. Yeah, yeah, and, you have. And, and you were you were stunned by how much water and how many islands and what you could actually see from up there. I remember you've just been blown away by it. Look, I'd been to Tasmania before as a as a, a, a probably a kid really, um, and we and the t the couple of times that I've been up, it was foggy and it was cloudy, and mm. but this was the first time I went up and, I, and it was actually you know like crystal clear. Yeah, I couldn't believe how beautiful yeah. the view was, and there's just it just seems like islands everywhere, estuaries, water. Um, and the thing is, they've now got like a shelter up the top, haven't they? Um, that you can go into. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but we didn't even need that, you know. No, no, no. It's uh, like uh, I'm just trying. The oh, pinnacle, echo, it's the called, pinnacle isn't it? yeah, yeah, the pinnacle obs observation, which is yeah. they use that in bad weather. But look, we were just really, really fortunate that the day we it's went good. was crystal clear. It sort of reminded me of like you know overlooking it. You know how in the Hawkesbury River, you yeah, know, all that like, water and yeah, stuff yeah. in uh, New South yeah. Wales, it reminded yeah. me that I was blown away. I just think it was beautiful. And there's also, you know, like you can stop, you know, a few times on the way up or on the way down. They've got like little areas where you, little car park areas and little park areas where they've got other little lookouts and little hikes and 
and things like that too. So it's not just the one spot up the top, you know. It's, it's, it's yeah, and apparently there's a fair bit of wildlife up there like paddy mullins and all that sort of thing, yeah. as you said, echidnas and, and all that sort of stuff. But the other thing is that yes. you can visit Yes. on the way up is the Cascade Brewery. Oh, the, yes. Well, that's that's right in the... Um, the foothills, they call it, don't they? The Cascade they do. Brewery. They, they do. Yeah, yeah. And, and now that, well, let me tell you, the Cascade Brewery was um, began by an ex-convent. Really? Yeah. Um, in 1824, Peter de Graves. But it was before that, it was actually a timber mill. And, okay. Yeah. And then um, it was turned into to, to a brewery, and it's the oldest operating brewery in Australia. Correct. Yeah. Did you know that? And apparently... At its peak in about 1983, uh, it had 95% of the beer market in Tasmania. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, yeah, Cascade Brewery. It's got um, the label has like a Tasmanian tiger on it. I remember that. Um, that's what makes it pretty, well, it, whether it does or now or not, I'm not sure, but it made it pretty pretty unique. Um, and you can go there and do tastings. They've yep, got Yeah, they do food. tours. So they yep. do tours and mm. tastings. And they're on every day from 10 to 4 p.m. except for like Christmas Day, Good Friday, you know, yeah, all, all the, the, all the major stuff. days. Yeah, yeah. So, But there also is a walking track which runs through the Cascades Lush Gardens. Oh, beautiful and, gardens. Yeah, and links the Hobart Waterfront and Mount Wellington. So it's as stunning. I keep on saying, like everything's so close. Everything's yeah. walking distance and it, it's just The gardens are beautiful. beautiful. And, um, yeah, so the gardens. You can walk around the gardens, which which um, are, are stunning. But I would even check out their website because I, I, they've got a beautiful videos showing, you know, the process of what they, they do and stuff. I, I thought their website was was great as well. So, yeah, so that's right sort of nestled back into the um, the bottom of, of Mount Wellington. Yep. Yeah. So now is there anything else before we move on to another popular spot that you'd like to tell us or you're, you're ready to go to that crazy I think crazy. we're going ready to go to that crazy <laughs> well, place. Well, let's go back to the waterfront then because yeah. you can hop on a ferry at the um, the waterfront and take the 11-kilometre trip from Hobart to Mona, which is a museum of modern slash crazy slash weird slash interesting slash I don't know what you call it, art. Uh, this this place is um, a very famous museum in Hobart. Started by an, a, a he must be a bit eccentric. David Walsh is his name, and you he doesn't like you to pigeonhole his museum. He said because it could change at any moment. I remember going to Mona. We actually drove there with some friends, and you drive through a bit of a, a winery to get there. But I just remember the um, winery is the Murilla. Oh, sounds... Marilla, Marilla, yeah. Is that okay? okay. Yep. Um, now, Tasmanians can get in for free, but they have pay. They have to book and pay a ten dollar deposit, and yeah. when they, if they turn up, they get their ten dollars back. Uh, the rest of us, it costs us about thirty five bucks to get in. Yeah. There are um, some beautiful uh, grounds and a stage outside and restaurants and stuff that you can just get, get into for free. Uh, at the moment, it's only open from Thursday through till Sunday. Yeah. And Every day they've got music on. So yep. every day you can go in there and for free and sit and they've got these beautiful sort of um, lounge chairs and bean bags and, and that sort of stuff. So it's pretty, pretty groovy. But inside, like I, how, how do you describe this without, you know, um, I don't, there's some places that are crazy. There's others that are outstanding. Uh, there's an app called The O, which if you're going to, go oh then you should download it because it explains everything as you go around and um when we were with our friends that um, they had that which was a which was pretty helpful because some of it i've got no idea what it was uh there's some really weird architecture interesting architecture very unusual art um there's oh, like interactive stuff there's digital art you know, I've got a photo of you looking into this massive big head on the ground and inside the head there's all these um, lights flashing and stuff to make it like that's how your brain fires. There's a fish in a plate swimming around. There's cars. There's things hanging from the ceiling. Um, there's six different restaurants and things yep. there as well. 
Uh, one's called the Vault, which I think you can go down and do wine tastings underground. Yep. And then there's this place, uh, if you want to be fancy for women only, is you can have a high tea. And the restaurant is um, emerald green and gold, and they encourage you to wear emerald green <laughs> gold. and gold. Yeah, so that, that sounds fascinating. Now, on the ferry, though, back to that, when you get off the ferry, there's 99 steps to go up. And apparently David insists that you use those steps if you can. But if you can't, there's a tunnel you can go through. So gosh, only knows what you'd find at the end of that that tunnel. Um, is there something you wanted to add about Mona? Look, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll read what the, the website says about the actual um, design of the building. Right. The sub-level structure is an architectural marvel, marvel. that started as... Walsh's private house, yes, but now has become a maze of underground tunnels, airy, colourful extensions, and a monument to art. Inside the walls are consistently changing, but visitors can expect to be shocked, yes, confused, yes, and impressed, yes, by the, uh, All the above. By, by not only the art but mm. uh, restaurants and other spaces. The, the the general collection houses about 1,900 pieces. Look, yeah, and I, look, I look, probably look. the thing that stands out to me. Hang on, before you go there, I just want to say, I think I know what Lyle's going to say. However, um, there are photos to prove what he's going to say, I'm sure, on the on our website um, yeah. <laughs> of this place. Like I got, it's really hard to capture some of, some of the stuff, but I, I did the best I could. And the one that when I think Lyle's going to talk about the shocking one, yes, it is shocking. Is, yeah, it's it's, and we're using the we're using the nice name. It's actually there's a another word that describes this that um, you know even I can't say um, out loud on a podcast. But let's just say use your imagination to to think about what that four letter word might be. And there's this. It's called the wall of vaginas. Vaginas. Um, and yeah. there, I don't know how many, but there's like hundreds or dozens maybe i don't know have a look of plaster casts of um different real shapes life, yeah yeah vaginas vaginas yeah yeah, yeah. Like, so, so and you and you can <laughs> and you, he's got comfortable you know like uh, couches mountains. there so you can just sit there and those couches <laughs> actually move like it's really weird look but, but uh, is it worth going to see absolutely, absolutely. So just up the road, 15 minutes away from Mona. Yep. Um, and like Mona, as I said, it's 11 kilometres from Hobart by the Derwent River. You can you can see, right? It's not that far. And so, yeah, another sort of 15 minutes away is uh, a really beautiful uh, wine make, maker. Yeah, yeah. Stef Stefana Lubiana. Yes. Uh, now that's in the Derwent River wine region. Mm. Now, do you know how many wine regions there are in Tasmania? Um, 27. Try seven. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it's a multiple of, 21's a multiple of seven, but there's seven. Yeah. Now, the reason why we bring up Stefano Lubiana, because it's only, as we said, 15 minutes from Mona. Look, it's absolutely beautiful wine. Yeah. We've, we, I think we first had it. Um, Port Douglas. Port Douglas, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we went and we had uh, the Pinot Gris um, uh, for dinner. Anyway, it was that good. We actually, because we were on holidays, we, we uh, went back in the afternoon, like about three o'clock in the afternoon. The next day, we the went next back day, and, and just uh, had a bottle of wine. Just had a just had a bottle of wine, and of course, um, the uh, the the our our waiter yes. was from um, South America somewhere. South America, yeah. 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 So yeah. Leanne obviously got a chance to practice her Spanish, anyway. but the winery is. It's it's a, a beautiful winery. Mm. Uh, the 2022 Pinot Gris is a, a is a small parcel of land, but large in flavour, mm. brimming with pear, rose water, and quince and Turkish fig flavours. Turkish fig. <laughs> Turkish fig. Hang on, don't laugh at me. <laughs> Finish with the perfect amount of astringency, complementing the oh. sensational fruit element leaving a refreshed palate mm. okay slightly pink in appearance yes the wine is sure to complement your favorite dish now yeah. i wrote all that no i didn't no that you was, didn't that oh, was straight oh, off duh. the. but 
But seriously. I was going to say, Lyle's is... been doing his research um, and he's, I think you're, you're no, teasing me. I yeah. am teasing you, but <laughs> seriously, the wine is fabulous. Yeah, mm. And it's like it's only 15 minutes from Mona and probably, I don't know, 25 minutes from Hobart. The thing about Hobart really gets me is that you've got all these beautiful wineries in these wine regions, regions. that maximum of about 30 minutes from town. And just, like you go to Perth, you've got to drive three hours to Margaret River. You mm. go to Adelaide, you've got to drive at least an hour to the Barossa Valley. All these beautiful wineries are within 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, you want to settle down, babe. Well, anyway. we'll have to go. We'll have to go back. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I just think it's fabulous. He's getting himself excited there. Yeah. Well, as you said, like it's it, Hobart's not a big city. You can walk around it and you can drive to these places. Um, one of the places that I think, though, is pretty special in Hobart is right as you cross the Tasman Bridge, you, ca you can see the um, Botanic Gardens. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And it's 14 hectares of cool climate garden. Now, the thing about cool climate gardens is they offer such a variety. Um, you know, just walking around the Botanic Gardens, you've got beautiful tree line walks everywhere. There's the one of the most popular spots is the the big lily pond. And uh, if you've uh, seen any photos of the Botanic Gardens, that's the, the bridge sort of across the lily pond is where that you get people to take a lot of wedding photos. Um, there's the the old um, fashioned. Uh, gatekeeper's cottage as as well as the the heritage walls that go around as well and there's a lot of climbing roses growing on those beautiful brick brick walls um there's a collection of tasmanian plants which are native plants but also the ferns and there's some beautiful ferns like you know we go to some of those waterfalls in the rainforest area and just the the gorgeous ferns and um and then they've also got the sub-antarctic plant collection and that's unique because i mean not, there's not a plant many places that you know have sub antarctic plants right so well they wouldn't um, grow many places. no right exactly another spot where it's popular you know walking around the gardens for obviously selfies and photos but also wedding photos is the anniversary arch and uh the big floral clock i mean you've got to love a floral clock don't you don <laughs> the conservatory though stop that was my yeah it keeps interrupting me the the conservatory though i love that because it's just got you just so many hanging pots with those beautiful, you know, when we were there, the zygo cactus and the beautiful, the flowers and the colours on those were just stunning. And then there's the shop near the succulent restaurant, which, um, yeah, what a great name for a restaurant, a succulent restaurant. Now it's open um, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The restaurant's not open on Christmas Day though. And from uh, 1st of April to the 30th of September, it's open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then when, you know, it gets a bit warmer, it's open from 1st of October to the 31st of March from 8 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Um, and a couple of other spots that aren't as popular but I, I love them was there's um, a Japanese garden. You can't go wrong with that. And also a Chinese garden, which I thought was nice. And, you know, often you don't think of a cool climate uh, garden as having palm trees, but there's um, they've got a lovely collection of, palm trees as well so it's definitely worth um you can you know like it's a bit of a walk from the city but it's a, you can walk there it's not not that far and um certainly worth it um around there also on the um the waterfront where you did mention where we stayed um the hadley's orient hotel there's a couple of famous um hotels that uh we, we went to one called the mac q01 uh which is you know out along the wharf and it's probably the most expensive um, hotel, but we went there to have a drink and uh, we had trouble even getting a drink, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, like it was really funny because it looks so flash, it looks so good. Yeah. And yet we found it really hard to get a yeah, drink. The, yeah, you know, yeah. The staff were. But it's because it was so spread out, I think. You know, oh, you get your own little boot. I know. I okay. think you're being yeah. kind. But it is a nice spot and they did have beautiful views. Uh, yeah. Yes, they did, yeah. they did. They and then did. there's an art hotel called the Henry Jones and um, that that's a pretty fascinating hotel to, to go and have a look at as well. So lots of different places to stay, uh, but I would definitely recommend trying to get somewhere with a view of the waterfront, you know, and then you can walk along there and, like Lyle, find somewhere to have a crayfish and. Um, oh yeah, on the way home, yeah, we, yeah. we we'd had a few, and uh, I was starting to get the hungers up. And yeah. Tasmania is known for its crayfish, yeah. so we had a beautiful crayfish dinner. We did, and, and it was fabulous. And probably another beautiful Tasmanian wine. Oh, we did. <laughs> now, before we finish off our beautiful um, 
tour of Hobart and hopefully we've given you lots of great reasons to visit Hobart. Oh, I know what we haven't mentioned. Oh, what's that? Not that we went, the casino. Yeah, yep. The casino is the oldest. West Point. Yeah, is the oldest casino in Australia. Yes, and I went there oh. the year it opened. <laughs> right. Did they have electricity back then? Oh, that was a bit hurtful. A bit it's one of the dominant features, though, on down the other side of the waterfront as well. So yeah, yeah, um, and they have a lot of en- entertainers there. Like that's where people go. Yeah, yeah. look, it was originally built uh, from what I can remember. Obviously, as a tourist attraction, yeah, it was sure. and the first ever in Australia. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was pretty. They had, a, and I can remember they had a a revolving restaurant, yes. the first ever I'd ever been, and I can remember I had. Uh, my and this is true. I remember having prawns with perno sauce, which oh. is perno's like a uh, an aniseed sauce, Yuck. and it was absolutely spectacular. I remember going um, to a revolving restaurant in Centrepoint Tower, but anyway, that's that's in Sydney. Let's go back to Hobart. Is there anything else we've missed? Because I know there's, um, you know, we, we've told you all the places we've seen where you should stay, the markets, all that sort of stuff. You know, Mount Wellington's amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we finish our tour of yes. Hobart? Oh, yes. Okay. In in my uh, just going back and just checking on 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 dates and stuff. Yes. For the history and everything, I actually came across what they call as a signature tour. Yeah. And um, it takes you to Who? five of the Southern Tasmania's best craft beverages experiences in the Huon and Coal River Valley. You can sip on award-winning wines, yes. stroll through idyllic vineyards and orchards and sample the best of the local beverages. Visit a winery, mm. a cider house, a brewery and a distillery. Approximately four to six tastings at each location. That's what I, you like. It. Oh, i got to tell you, <laughs> I reckon that'll be a challenge. Um, it's, it's all day. It goes from 10 o'clock down on the uh, Constitution dock. It yep. starts. And it finishes there at 5.15 p.m. It's only $229 per person. And you're looking, it's about $25 and they throw lunch in as well, extra. But so, when I read that, I thought, how cool would that be? Yeah. Who runs that tour? Uh, signature Tours. Okay, oh, Signature Tours. You said that, sorry. I yeah, think yeah, yeah, that. Okay. I'm not absolutely positive. I just read it and I thought... Yeah. If I went back to Hobart, I'll want well, to I'll do tell you that. What, I'll, um, I'll remember to put a link to that in the show notes, all yeah. right, um, and, uh, for this episode. So this is episode 44. So, yeah, go to the, the show notes on our website at beachtravelwine.com and check out all the pictures of all these beautiful, beautiful places we've told you about. And, um, yeah, I hope you really um, get a lot out of our going to Hobart. Uh, podcast because we just we we just love it and we can't wait to tell you all about our um our road trip around um uh, yeah uh, around tasmania yes lol can i say put his hand up like yeah can i (laughs) say one thing (laughs) there's not one person that i've spoken to that's gone to tasmania and hobart and you know Mm. and traveled there that has an absolutely loved it. That sure, sure. Uh, you know, we've got coming up, and I normally don't, you know, preview other episodes, but we we've got coming up national parks, you know, tours on the beautiful rivers. We're talking about amazing wines, amazing foods, you know, lavender um, farms and, and yes, lavender ice cream. La- yeah, well, it's at the lavender farm, and um, you know, lots of hiking we did, and and there's a the blowholes and the bay of fires and there's just so much stuff we've got coming up in the next few episodes on our lap of Tasmania. So until then, hasta luego, mis amigos. Adios, amigos. Mm-hmm.